this edition of Manned Space, we take a look at a collectible that once belonged to one of the hundreds of thousands of dedicated Americans who helped make the moon landings possible. Back in the day, NASA had to figure out a way to move the massive 363-foot-tall multi-million pound moon rocket it called Saturn V from the building in which it was assembled, the Vehicle Assembly Building or VAB, to the launch complex where it would lift off to carry men to the moon. The answer came from the coal mining industry and giant machines which were performing surface strip mining operations in Kentucky. A company called the Marion Power Shovel Company had for years been manufacturing giant machines for mining operations. Marion had developed a massive 16-story stripping shovel it dubbed the Mountaineer. It included a set of two crawlers at each of its four corners to provide locomotion. Marion possessed the necessary experience needed to build a huge transporter for the Saturn V. Marion was awarded a contract to build a crawler transporter. By December of 1963, Marion had completed 90% of the design and expected to deliver the first transporter components to the Kennedy Space Center by March of 1964. As Marion moved forward with the development of the crawler transporter, it was running into trouble with the subcontractor responsible for the hydraulic system needed for steering and leveling the giant machine. Marion hired the Bendix Corporation to check the leveling and equalization systems the findings by Bendix resulted in several design changes to address the leveling and equalization concerns. While it was the Marion Power Shovel Company that designed and built the crawler transporter, it fell to the people of the Bendix Corporation to actually operate the massive machine. Then, on August 26, 1967, the first Saturn V rocket was ferried by the crawler transporter from the VAB to launch pad 39A. Dubbed Apollo 4, this was to be an unmanned launch to test the giant Saturn V moon rocket. Apollo 4 was the first test flight of the Saturn V launch vehicle. It successfully lifted off and reached orbit on November 9, 1967. The massive transporter weighed in at over 6 million pounds. It was 131 feet long and 114 feet wide. Equipped with a mobile launcher containing the infrastructure enabling technicians to access the Saturn V while it was on the launch pad, the combined weight of the transporter, mobile launcher, and unfueled Saturn V exceeded 17 million pounds. The vehicle moved on four double-tracked crawlers, each 10 feet high by 40 feet long. Each shoe on each track weighed about a ton. There were 57 shoes on each track and a total of eight tracks on the vehicle. Capable of reaching the speed of one mile per hour, the massive transporter was powered by two main drive diesel engines providing 5,500 horsepower. Another 2,130 horsepower was generated for, among other things, leveling and jacking. The giant transporter was driven down a turnpike NASA called a crawler way, consisting of two 40-foot wide lanes separated by a 50-foot median. On October 9, 1968, with the crew of Apollo 8, Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders on hand, the rollout of the Apollo 8 Saturn V launch vehicle occurred. Apollo 8 became man's first flight beyond Earth orbit and first space flight to the moon. Apollo 8 may best be remembered for this iconic photograph taken by William Anders. The collectible we look at today belonged to a man who played a pivotal role in the rollout of the Apollo 8 Saturn V. We're looking at a certificate of participation issued to Bruce H. Dunmire to commemorate his role in the Apollo 8 mission. But just what was his role? I wanted to know more, 
I noted that on the certificate is printed the signature of F.W. Vaughn, who we're told is the general manager for the launch support division of the Bendix Corporation. Assuming Mr. Dunmire worked for Bendix, I was soon able to locate a Kennedy Space Center press release dated September 15, 1966, which includes an interview with Bruce Dunmire. The press release, entitled Transporter's Leveling System Balances Load Precisely, tells us that balancing a 12 million pound load of any kind calls for precise engineering. It reminds us that when the load is a 46 story high mobile launcher and an Apollo Saturn V perched atop a crawler transporter, the job is truly awesome. A quote from Bruce Dunmire tells us that a major problem is gusty winds which tend to throw off the balance. He's identified as a Bendix supervisory engineer for the transporter. He's further quoted as saying, when this happens, decisions by the jacking, equalization, and leveling engineer become critical. He must make the right decisions to adjust, level, and make them quickly. Once I was able to identify the position that Mr. Dunmeyer held with the Bendix Corporation, I was able to do further research. I came across a website called wherewereyou.com. In it, they asked where were you on July 20th, 1969, that being the date of the historic first moon landing by Apollo 11. In it is a posting that reads, I was the supervisory engineer responsible for moving the crawler transporter on Apollo 11 from the vehicle assembly building to the launch pad. The day before the rollout, I made a speech to the crawler transporter crew telling them that this rollout of Apollo 11 will be one of the most important events in our lives. I wanted all of us to perform at our best because the world was looking at us all. Thank you, Mr. Dunmire, for the role you played during Apollo 8 and throughout the Apollo program. Do you know somebody that participated in the early days of the space program? If so, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching Man's Space. Please watch for upcoming videos at least twice a week, during which I'll discuss the history of the space program by highlighting artifacts and memorabilia from my extensive space collection. Also, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button for more great content about Man's Space.